So I'm starting out this build with a piece of AEBL stainless steel. I'll be using my Swamp Spike template, trace it out on steel and cut it out. This will be an all stock removal knife. The main focus of this video is hollow grinding, but we got to get the knife made first. And I'm happy to report this is the first video since I returned from Blade Show. I had a great time and I'm also happy to report I received my German Smith stamp with the American Bladesmith Society. It was a very tense time for me. I also got to see a lot of my old friends and meet some new ones. It was a great time. All right, let's get this thing cut out. And we'll get it profiled and I'll go ahead and transfer the holes from my template and get those drilled. Oh, and we got to have the most important ingredient, coffee. I like to chamfer all the holes just to reduce any stress risers when we go to heat treat. I'll be heat treating this blade before I grind it. This is stainless foil. This will reduce oxidation. Stainless doesn't do well if you don't control the environment. And these stainless packets will reduce oxidation tremendously. I won't go through the whole heat treating process, but we're going to get it in the oven and get it done. So I was within 100 degrees of my target temp ready to start soaking and blew out one of my relays. Made a pop noise, smoke went everywhere. Took me about 10 minutes to change it out. I've got three or four spares. This rarely happens, but it does. Now I gotta wait again, probably 30 minutes to get back up to temp. I'll go ahead and get the flats hand sanded before I grind in the bevels. Go ahead and get some scribe lines on here and get it ground. All right, so I got my center marks here. I'm gonna go ahead and do a 45 degree bevel up to those center marks. And I'm gonna do that with a dull belt, dull 50 grit belt. Then I will replace the belt with a new one and grind into bevels. This way I don't shear off good grit on a new belt on that hard edge. But this way I've established my plunge lines as well. I know I'll probably say this a hundred times, but even though I'm just putting in these initial bevels, I'm using the same techniques that I'll always use when grinding bevels, and that's using slow, steady movements with my arms by my side braced. And I'll go over some details a little greater depth when I get these initial bevels on here. Okay, before we start grinding the main bevels, I wanted to go over a few things before we start. I've got my plunge lines established, and more importantly, my center line, where I'm gonna grind up to, creep up on as I'm grinding the bevels. I've marked them so I can see where I'm at. Just take a blue marker and do that. But I'm gonna bring these edges down to about 20 thousandths. Right now, that's about a 35 thousandth width on the edge. There's several ways to hollow grind, freehanding, jigs, using a file guide. It just depends on the user. There's no right or wrong way. You can see here I'm starting off with a very small wrist. It has to do with the shape of this blade, but I want to sit it down on that wrist where I can really put some pressure on it. Don't have to worry about getting my hand in it so much right now. You don't have to start out that way. That's just the way I do it. It's comfortable for me. Now, later on, I'll pull the rest off once I get my bevel established and I can feel the wheel and I'll finish it out. Now, you can certainly use a jig to do this. The problem is the shape of the blade. It, it, it'll get in the way unless you 
don't have a rest on there. You remove the rest, then the jig works, but then you're kind of defeating the purpose of the jig because it needs to set on something and drag it across. The other way is using a file guide like this, where you clamp it, you cut your bevels, and you got a carbide face here, and you can't go past it, and you get good, even plunge lines. I find this works good, but it just gets in my way. It's just whatever the user prefers. Now I'm grinding this blade after heat treating. So I like to run slow. I don't like to run my grinder fast. It's easy to burn a blade real quickly. Once you do that, you ruined it. I run at a slow speed. I run barehanded where I can feel that blade, feel the temperature, and I'll keep it quenched in water. Well, I'm gonna start off now on the main bevels. I got a fresh belt and I'll work my way up to my final grit. And this process is using slow, steady movements. I'm keeping my elbows by my side and moving across, just slow, steady movements. You wanna be careful not to burn the tip or any part of it, but you can easily burn a tip, especially on a very pointed blade like this one. These are kind of difficult to start hollow grinding, but same principle of grinding applies to any blade you're working on. Slow, steady movement, brace your arms. Some people sit down and grind. That's fine, you need to be able to see what you're doing. I wear glasses, so let's get to it. I'm just moving the belt over so that I can correct my plunge line. Okay, now we're ready to start moving up in grits. Now's when I wanna make sure I make my plunge lines good and square, everything's centered. And the way I do that is by overlapping my belt a little. If I was wanting some fancy grind lines out here, I'd already be overlapping it anyway. I overlap it and bump it into these shoulders to get them square. Now, some people use a waterfall platen, but guess what? You can't do that on a hollow ground knife. The platen is square or flat, and this is hollow, so that's not gonna fly here. So I'll use the J-Flex belt that I'll overlap the wheel, let it come in here and cut that radius. I'm down to about 30 thousandths on my edge. I'm gonna get down around 20, 15 or 20 thousandths, and then we'll go to our next step, which is finishing these blades. All right, that looks pretty good. Time to start doing some hand sanding. This is a little hand sanding tool that I made and I use it to get into the plunge lines. It has a rounded edge that'll fit the contour of the wheel that I did the hollow grind with. I'm only gonna bring these up to around 600 grit hand sanding and I'd be perfect for this EDC swamp spike.
This is another tool that I use for sanding hollow grinds on this particular wheel. I have several of these tools, but it's shaped the same way, and this will help me get the full width of that bevel. And I've got my handle material, which is linen micarta with red spacers. I'm going to go ahead and get these fit up and drilled out. I'll go ahead and finish up the front of these handles, get them polished, and put the decorative bevels on before we put them onto the knife. I just scribed some lines on here where I want these decorative bevels to stop. And these are not just decorative, they also serve a function. They take the sharp edge off of the front of the handle so it'll go easily in and out of the sheath and it feels better in the hand. I just set them up in a 45 degree jig and cut them and then I just continue to go up into the final grit and then I'll polish them on the buffer. And it's time to etch our logo. Go ahead and get these handles glued up and finish them out. Once I get the contouring done on the handles, you see me using slack belt. I do a lot of slack belt grinding and do very little hand sanding once I'm done. I'll do a little cleanup with hand sanding, but I like to finish them out with the belt as much as possible. Use your tools. So here's a look at the finished knife. Turned out pretty good. I'll be making a sheath for this knife in the next video out of Kydex, so be sure to subscribe and watch out for that video. It'll be coming out next week. Yep, I made more than one while making this video. I'd like to thank you for watching. If you got any questions, just leave them down in the comments. I want to thank my patrons, and we're going to see you on the next one.